Aloha and Namaste. My name is Jonathan Barlow Gee, and I'm a metaphysician. A large part of what this entails is scholarly research culminating in applying variable labels to geometric lattice diagrams with the intention of finding axiomatic relationships between these variables. Some would call this doing Kabbalah. To me, it is simply symbology. Consider this design, called an apocalypse star, based on a diagram in the work Dimensions of Paradise by number theorist John Frederick Carden Michel, 1933 to 2009. Onto it have been affixed all 22 attributes of Kabbalah's mystical paths of wisdom, corresponding also to the Tarot trumps that include the 12 signs of the zodiac round, the seven classical planets of antiquity, and the three alchemical phases of matter. To better understand why these 22 variable labels are each placed in the location they are on this diagram, we may also look at it color-coded. Here we see that the 12 astrological signs of the zodiac round apply upon the seven lengths of blue lines, the skip one heptagram, and four out of the seven red lines, the skip two heptagram the other three being devoted to the alchemical elements. Surrounding these, in green, are the seven classical planets of antiquity. The result of this arrangement is the placement of the equivalent symbols onto the so-called apocalypse star, as we see here. The labels of the twelve astrological signs of the zodiac round we see are doubled so that there are a total of 24 zodiac signs, six alchemical glyphs, and the seven classical planets of antiquity, labeled here. We have now seen how the seven-pointed star, or heptagram, can serve as a lattice onto which may be placed, at least, the 22 symbols of Hakabala's mystic paths, and thus how this apocalypse star may serve as a truncated form of a Kabbalah's Tree of Life model. So now that we understand this basic tool of metaphysics, let's try to apply it to some other, perhaps more well-known, symbols of so-called sacred geometry. From these three most essential shapes in 2D, Euclidean plane space, the circle, the triangle, and the square, can be extrapolated their fourth spatial dimensional counterparts in the forms of the torus, the stelloctahedron, and the tesseract. Let us look at these forms, but especially at their symbols, the shadows they cast into the collective subconscious, in this case as the flower of life, the Sri Yantra, and Metatron's cube. The first of these such forms we can deal with is also the most complex, but because it is the basis for much of Kabbalah, I have already addressed it in great detail elsewhere and will not belabor the point here but to say, a tesseract is a fourth spatial dimensional object and, as such, may exist in multiple different places in three space and at multiple different times and still be unified as a single hyperspatial object. As such, the tesseract is a metaphor or archetype of sacred geometry expressing the notion of time. In modern New Age literature, there are equivalencies drawn between Metatron, Enoch, and Thoth, or Tehuti, the Egyptian god of the moon, who also reigned over time as the record keeper of all the days lived by each newly dead soul to be weighed. Now, the next simpler shape we may consider the form of is the hypertetrahedron, or stelloctahedron, whose symbolic shadow is cast as the Sri Yantra, 
an ancient Vedic design based on an even more ancient sacred geometry. The Sri Yantra is in the Orient much alike what the Tree of Life lattice diagram of Kabbalah is for the Occident. First, we should note in studying the symbolic shadow of the Sri Yantra, cast down by the fourth dimensional form of the twin conjoined tetrahedra, derives originally from the two dimensional shape of the simple triangle or trigram. By repeatedly recombining this shape with itself, we can derive more archetypal sacred geometries in two space, and each of these will have its own symbol set attributed to it. The Sri Yantra provides lesser and greater sizes of triangles interior to its overall design. Nine primary triangles comprise the structure carving out 43 smaller triangles within them, and these can all be organized according to a series of concentric levels and depicted three-dimensionally as Mount Maru. The Sri Yantra is central to the Sri Vidya system of Hindu Tantra, which is based on the Hindu philosophy of Shaktism, or belief in the goddess Adi Parashakti, whose name means first supreme power, and whom rules as the primordial cosmic energy from the source of all else. Central to the Sri Yantra is the Bindu, or power point, literally droplet in Sanskrit, considered the point at which creation begins and may become unity. The Bindu is also described as the sacred symbol of the cosmos in its unmanifested state. Now let us turn our attention from ancient oriental metaphysics to the origin for the concept of a toroidal vortex coil. The simplest shape of the three given to start with is the circle, its four-dimensional counterpart, the torus, and the shadowed symbol cast out by this form is the so-called flower of life depiction of modern sacred geometry. Just as the 4D torus was the basis for the so-called vortex coil, so too was the flower of life the symbol by which ancient people referred to the torus. The flower of life model contains six circles intersecting at a point with the seventh circle centered on that intersection, producing a design with six-fold dihedral symmetry composed from six intersecting vesica Pisces lenses. The pattern figure can be drawn with pen and compass by creating seven interlinking circles of the same diameter, touching the previous circle's center. The second circle is centered at any point on the first circle. All following circles are centered on the intersection of two other circles. The triangular lattice form, with circle radii equal to their separation, is called a seven overlapping circles grid. The name Flower of Life is modern associated with the New Age movement, and commonly attributed to specifically Dronvalo Melchizedek in his book The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, 1999. The six-petal rosette, central to the design, is also known as the Son of the Alps, and has been used as the emblem of Padanian nationalism in northern Italy since the 1990s. Martha Bartfield describes the construction. This design consists of circles having a one unit radius with each point of intersection serving as a new center. The design can be expanded ad infinitum depending upon the number of times the odd numbered points are marked off. 
In quilting, the pattern has been called diamond or triangle wedding ring to distinguish it from the traditional square tiling pattern. The pattern also underlies one type of giri pattern, a decorative Islamic geometric art form used in architecture and handicraft objects consisting of angled lines that form an interlacing strap pattern. Patterns of seven overlapping circles appear in historical artifacts from the 7th century BC onwards. They become a frequently used ornament in the Roman Empire period and survive into medieval artistic traditions both in Islamic art, Giri architectures and decorations, and in Gothic art, cathedral and stained glass motif designs. Similar patterns were sometimes used in England as apotropaic marks to keep witches from entering buildings. The pattern is also to be found in the Hindu temple at Prabhanan in Java. Although the drawings are not mentioned in the extensive listings of graffiti at the temple compiled by Margaret Murray in 1904, five patterns of 19 overlapping circles appear on the granite columns at the Temple of Osiris in Abydos, Egypt and a further five on a column opposite the building, all drawn in red ochre. The oldest now known occurrence of the overlapping circles pattern is dated to 645 BC and found on the threshold of the palace of Assyrian king Ashur Bani Apli, 668 to 627 BC, in Dersurukin, the fortress of Sargon, present-day Khorsabad. The symbol, carved into a house's ceiling beam, was supposed to protect the house from lightning strikes. In this Cypro-Archaic 1, 8th to 7th centuries BC cup from Idalion, Cyprus, the pattern does not have a hexagonal outline. The carvings on the cup also depict mythological scenes, a sphinx frieze, and the representation of a king vanquishing his enemies. In this mosaic from Ephesus, an ancient Greek city on the coast of Ionia, in present-day Izmir province, Turkey, we find an example dating from sometime between the city's founding in the 10th century BC until around the time of its sacking by the Goths in 263 AD. The design becomes more widespread in the early centuries of the Common Era and was a frequently used ornament in the Roman Empire period. Herod the Great, 73 BC until 4 BC, built a palace within the fortress of Herodium, about 12 kilometers south of Jerusalem. This was most likely where Herod lived. He decorated his rooms with mosaic floors and elaborate frescoes. In the trepidarium of the Roman bathhouse at Herod's palace, we find this mosaic of the Flower of Life seven circle. Dating from around this same period, the Talpia tomb is a rock-cut tomb discovered in 1980 AD in the East Talpia neighborhood, five kilometers, around three miles, south of the old city in East Jerusalem. The tomb contained ten ossuaries, six inscribed with epigraphs, including one interpreted as Yeshua bar Yohesef, Joshua, son of Joseph. Several of these bear flower of life pattern sacred geometrical engravings. The other epigraphs read, 
Yose, a diminutive of Joseph. Maria, written in Aramaic script, a Latin form of the Hebrew name Miriam, Mary. Matia, Hebrew for Matthew. Miriamini e Mara, Greek for Mary known as the Master. The similar name, Mariamne, is found in the Acts of Philip. Lastly, Yehuda bar Yeshua, possibly Aramaic for Judah, son of Jesus. Although likely attributable to this visual representation of the Borromean reigns used as an emblem of Lorenzo de' Medici in San Pancrazio, Florence, Leonardo da Vinci recorded observations about this geometric pattern as well. Da Vinci, in his Codex Atlanticus, Folio 307R to 309V, as well as in 459R, dated 1478 to 1519 AD, explicitly discussed the mathematical proportions of the design. While providing a geometric puzzle as a pastime may have caught the attention of the maestro momentarily, this model seems to have proved of little practical use in spite of Leonardo's attempts to decipher and decrypt it. So this shape declined into the dustbin of history where it languished for the next 600 years or so until now. Using the method of Marco Roden and Randy Powell in arranging coils into a torus by counting the number of gaps between them, I have formulated what I hope will serve as the basis for further consideration to come on the subjects of induction patterns, vortex math, and implosion theories. Note that because the seventh circle contains the rest, the central six circles overlap to leave a total of 36 gaps. But even more significantly than as an electrical engineering schematic for a basic wire coiling design, the toroid form can be geometrically expanded in abstract to encompass the entirety of all possible motions for direction, the three vectors of the past being blue shifted and the three vectors of the future red shifted. Thus, in a sense, a simple toroid may be thought of as containing not only our own cosmos, but also its three most likely futures and its three definite pasts. A flat circle expanded becomes a 3D sphere. A sphere turned inside out becomes a 4D toroid. The combination of the 4D toroid and the 3D sphere is a 5D hypersphere. If a 4D toroid can expand indefinitely to encompass the whole of our cosmos and all its possible pasts and potential futures, then a 5D hypersphere may be thought of as describing the conditions of the Big Bang or those at the gravitational singularity in the core of a black hole and as being adjacent to our own cosmos in its timelines. The aura of a living person has evolved to mimic these cosmic scale patterns as well. The averaged pattern of all people's electromagnetic field lines forms the torus over time. So within us each illuminates forth a five-dimensional primary clear light as motivating force for this EM field. This single emanation of 5D hyperspatial or tachyonic radiation 
splits itself prismatically into the five chakras along the spine and two in our brain. Or, in short, the primary clear light splits apart into the seven vortexes of the chakras, like a beam of white light being split by a prism into the seven color visible spectrum. Namaste and Aloha. Mathematical nature of the diagonal lengths for the sequence of the first five squares arranged along a gnomon. Apply Pythagorean theorem, reduction of square roots methods, and the formula for the diagonal of any width perfect square. Results are, as noted by Cylon, the Pythagorean cult exile, for the unit square with sides equal to one each, the diagonal is square root of two. Thus, according to the formula for the diagonal of perfect squares, each further iteration is the width of one side of the square multiplied by square root of two. According to application of the Pythagorean theorem, we arrive at square root of two squared plus two squared equals square root of eight, where 2 squared equals 4, which reduces to the same amount expressed as 2 times the square root of 2. Likewise, for 3 square root of 2 equals square root of 18, of 4 square root of 2 equals square root of 32, and of 5 square root of 2 equals square root of 50. This is due to the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared or square root of the leg squared plus leg squared equals square root of the hypotenuse wherein square root of 5 squared equals 25 plus 5 squared equals square root of 50 on the left the seven planetary rulers over the twelve astrological signs of the zodiac expressed as an orthogonal matrix. On the right, the seven chakras of the kundalini along a diagonal vector between twelve regular polytopes in multiple dimensions. In this diagram, above, we see the now familiar area 25, 5 squared, However, here we see it divided into twin area 4, 2 squared, and area 6, 3 squared squares that overlap in the center to form a single base unit square. The base 4 squares are in the upper right and lower left, and between them is an arc showing the relationship between them in the center square. The measure of the leg of the area 25, 5 squared square divided in this way yields the golden ratio of one to two or two-thirds. This golden ratio, called phi, also appears in the legs of the regular pentagram as between the length of a leg under a stellation to the length of that leg as an arm of an adjacent stellation. This works out such that the length three is blue, the length two, green, and the length one red in both the diagrams above. Here we can see that by measuring the circle's radius as the hypotenuse of the golden ratio Pythagorean triangle, we can yield the larger areas of the base 8, 10, and 12 squared circles. Therefore, these are the two ways to yield a square circle from applying the Pythagorean triangle with its golden ratio of 3, 4, 5 to split the 15 degree angle difference between 45, 45 fractal expansion, base 12 hypotenuse, and the 30, 60 mnemonic expansion, base 10 hypotenuse. These lengths for the hypotenuse radius of the square circle are derived by continuing to follow the gnomonic and fractal expansion rates up to base 12, 13, 
and 16 areas. Here are all the fundamental measures of the Pythagorean square circle formula for any figure up to circle radius 8. One joule of energy equals one kilogram of mass traveling at a velocity of light speed squared or 89 quadrillion 875 trillion 517 billion 873 million 681 thousand 800 square meters per second squared where the square of one second is one second E equals MC squared. Light speed, or 299,792,458 meters per second, equals the square root of one joule of energy per each square root of one kilogram of mass. C equals the square root of E over M. One kilogram of mass equals one joule of energy exhibiting stationary density at the square root of light speed, or 17,314 square meters per second. M equals E over square root of... Each original idea is a shard from the transfinite ideal metaform. Every thought is attacked from all sides by countless alternative perspectives. All emotions occur simultaneously as scalar wavelengths in a planar field. Postulate. If the functions of psi, ESP potential, are graphed onto geometric forms as diagrammatic lattices, then their sum yields multidimensional results. Formula. If idea is mapped onto the corner points of a metaform object and thought is mapped onto the edges of same and emotion onto the faces of same then patterns form thus a tetrahedron equals four ideas four thoughts and four emotions an octahedron equals six ideas twelve thoughts and eight emotions a cube equals eight ideas, 12 thoughts, and six emotions. An isosahedron equals 12 ideas, 30 thoughts, and 20 emotions. A dodecahedron equals 20 ideas, 30 thoughts, and 12 emotions. These patterns also occur in non-third dimensional forms as well. Explication. The combination of all actual motions of all metaforms made of psi energy moving amidst and often through one another amounts to the experience of this limitless energy field as our own mental egos. Our own neural networks are only sieves filtering out static and rendering more exact psi energy, temporal ellipses in their wake. The combination of all possible metaforms of psi and all their possible trajectories provides the inductive cosmological set and deduction reduces this from infinitude to an apprehensible scale. The result is the perception of psi energy 
in phases within the singularity well of ego as ideas, thoughts, and emotions. There are various ways to define what constitutes an ideal form in any dimension. For example, if one begins with the zero dimension of one corner point and proceeds next to the two types of one-dimensional extension of such a point, the straight line and the semicircular arc. However, these lower dimensions are not usually included in the list of ideal forms, which begins most commonly with two-dimensional planar faces in the form of the three regular polygons, triangle, square, and pentagon. However, the circle, comprised of a single completed arc, can also be counted as a shape at this stage, as the sphere can be in three dimensions, although it is usually excluded. In three dimensions, the ideal forms are the regular polyhedra, the tetrahedron, or simplex, of four triangles, the octahedron, or orthoplex of eight triangles, the cube or hexahedron of six squares, the isosahedron of 20 triangles, and the dodecahedron of 12 pentagons. In four space, these have corresponding geometrical forms as well. There are six four space regular polytopes, the five cell hypertetrahedron, the eight cell tesseract, the sixteen cell hyperoctahedron, the twenty four cell self dual, the one hundred and twenty cell four D isosahedron, and the six hundred cell four dodecahedron. The circle and sphere also have a correspondent fourth spatial dimensional form, the torus or hypersphere. In all dimensions greater than four, only three types of metaform ideal shapes exist. These are extensions of patterns formed in the first three 3D solids, the simplex, hypertetrahedron, the orthoplex, hyperisosahedron, and the tesseract, hypercube. Therefore, in the five extraspatial dimensions from the fifth through the tenth dimension, there are only fifteen ideal forms. To assemble the five ideal forms in three dimensions, and do so each one at a time, one would only need as many components, corners, edges, and faces as the largest, most complex of the solid forms. In three dimensions, this being the dodecahedron of 20 corners, 30 edges, and 12 pentagonal faces. In four dimensions, the 600 cell of 120 corners, 720 edges, 1,200 faces, and 600 solid shapes. However, if you wanted to assemble all of the solids in all of the dimensions simultaneously, one would require 190 components, 50 corners, 90 edges, and 50 faces in three dimensions, and 49,990 elements, 773 corners, 1,362 edges, 2,082 faces, and 773 solid cells in four dimensions. Thus, for all the ideal forms in both three and four spatial dimensions to be all assembled one next to the other in a line would require 5,180 parts, 823 corners, 1,452 edges, 2,132 faces, 
773 solid cell shapes. The total of all these parts assembled into shapes along this line, however, is only 11 ideal forms in the third and fourth dimensions, excluding the sphere and torus. To assemble the 15 ideal forms in the fifth through the tenth spatial dimensions, and to do so each one at a time, one would only need as many components, corners, edges, and faces, as the largest, most complex of the metaforms. In ten dimensions, this being the hypercube of 59,048 components. However, if you wanted to assemble all of these metasolids in all of the dimensions from 5 through 10 simultaneously, one would require a total of 4,020 components for the simplex model, the hypertetrahedron, 88,446 components for the tesseract model, the hypercube, and 88,000 446 components alike for the orthoplex or cross polytope, the hyperoctahedron. This means to assemble these 15 shapes altogether would require a total of 180,912 components to complete. To assemble one each of the 26 ideal forms in the first 10 dimensions one would therefore need 186,092 components. Metaforms Hyperspace Geometry Let us begin by examining pi as the circumference of a circle whose radius is one-half base unit or whose diameter is one. Expanding next upward from this we see a square whose radius is one unit called the unit square comprised of sides of base 2 and a total area of base 4 squares. However, the circle we see outlining this square is not exactly of circumference base two pi because the radius of the circle supersedes the radius of the square by a certain margin seen here represented by the golden ratio. The radius of this circle is the diagonal square root of the base one unit cube which is called the square root of two. We find in the second dimension that there are exactly 64 possible recombinations of the base 4 elements because 64 is 2 to the 8th or a unit squared hypercubed. Next, extending the basic radius 1 unit square into the next dimension upward, that of height in three dimensions we can see how to derive the first simplest shape of the five regular three-dimensional solids. This shape, the tetrahedron, has four faces with three sides each. The next most complex shape, the cube, has six faces of four sides or edges each. Next, the octahedron, a double pyramid, one above and one below, has eight sides, each with three edges. The next most complex shape is the dodecahedron, which has twelve sides of pentagonal faces with three edges each. And lastly, the most complex form is the isosahedron, with 20 faces, each of three edges. These five regular three-dimensional rhombic solids can all be nested one inside another in this manner, such that a green octahedron is central 
inside a yellow cube within in turn a pale blue dodecahedron which nests inside a dark blue isosahedron. Next we will look at how each of these five regular three-dimensional solids nests within itself beginning with the stelloctahedron the so-called stellated octahedron the nesting of one tetrahedron of equal size within the same area as another equal volumed tetrahedron in three dimensions we can see that the traditional oriental Sri Yantra is only comprised of eight different sized tetrahedrons nested within one another. Next we will examine the cube which we see here nesting a tetrahedron outside an octahedron outside an isosahedron outside a dodecahedron in the model we will be considering next, the cube nests within another cube of the same area and volume. The shape we are seeing modeled here is called a hypercube, or a nested cube within a cube, which are of equal area and thus measure the same one cube over time. A fourth dimensional cube or a so-called tesseract such as this has a total of 16 corners 12 faces each of eight sides or edges and we model it using motion to symbolize the fourth dimension these anamorphic solids occur as we measure the diagonal across from one corner of a hypercube or tesseract to the corner opposite. Just as we have seen that a tetrahedron nested inside another tetrahedron, or the stalactahedron, is a hypertetrahedron, and that a cube nested inside another cube is a hypercube or tesseract, the next most complex polyhedral three-dimensional solid we can assume four-dimensional shape four by nesting it within itself is the dodecahedron of pentagonal sides with five edges each here we see the hyperspatial geometry of a hyper dodecahedron or a dodecahedron nested within another dodecahedron graphed according to a series of smaller and smaller or alternately larger and larger dodecahedrons within dodecahedrons creating an infinite feedback loop of pentagons in this simple wireframe model we can see in green that the dodecahedron is formed as a stellation in purple extended from the isosahedron in blue centrally within and here we see a dodecahedron in blue nesting within it a green isosahedron around a yellow tetrahedron around a red octahedron studying how these solids overlap one another provides us a manner to approach looking at how each shape overlaps itself in the fourth dimension when modeled as motion over time the most complex three-dimensional rhombic solid to be examined here is the isosahedron of 20 triangular faces. Seen here alike a pentagon, we see the gray wireframe isosahedron is generated as an extension connecting the stellations extending outward in green from the yellow cubes interior red stelloctahedron as we see in this blue wireframe model the isosahedron can itself be formed by connecting the tips of a stelloctahedron shown here in purple that can in turn contain a dodecahedron shown in green just as each one of these 
five regular rhombic solids in three dimensions can nest within it all the other four of the solids. And just as each solid creates an infinitely repeating loop when doubled with itself over time. And just as for the square in two dimensions, we examine 64 different possible combinations of elemental characters of four base each, so too do we see that all these same rules apply also to the dot, circle, orb, and hypersphere, or torus, where instead of linear edges forming flat sides, there are pi circumferential arcs forming circles within circles, orbs within orbs, or the hypersphere, a sphere within a sphere. Lastly, we measure the motion of the torus or hypersphere as it involutes through and around itself using a golden ratio spiral to measure its phi circumference over pi radius. What we will be looking at in this video will be entirely two-dimensional representations of greater dimensional shapes. In three dimensions, these shapes will be familiar and their depictions intuitive. However, in four and five dimensions, these shapes and forms obey rules for geometry greater than even those bounding our own local cosmos so we can only depict them as two-dimensional representations of three-dimensional shadows cast as wire frames of these hypershapes edges. The five regular polytopes in three dimensions, called grossly the platonic solids, are the easiest to model in two dimensions. Wireframe models may be used to depict their stationary points along their three spin axes of symmetry, seen from above a cell face, from above an edge line, and from above a vertex corner, respectively. Likewise, between these wireframe stations, motion may be animated using CGI to imitate the length, width, and depth of the 3D solid objects. The simplest regular polytope in three dimensions is the tetrahedron, whose spin axes of symmetry connect from above a cell face to an opposite vertex corner, from above one edge line's midpoint to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above a vertex corner to the centroid of the opposite cell face. The only regular polytope formed of squares. The cube's spin axes of symmetry connect from the centroid of one cell face to the centroid of the opposite cell face, from above the midpoint of an edge line to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above a vertex corner to the opposite vertex corner. The octahedron like the tetrahedron and isosahedron, is made up of triangular cell faces, and its spin axes of symmetry connect from above the centroid of one of the polytope's faces to the centroid of the opposite cell face, from above the midpoint of one edge line to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above one vertex corner to the opposite vertex corner. Comprised of 20 triangles, this polytope's three spin axes of symmetry connect from above the centroid of one of its cell faces to the centroid of its opposite cell face, from above the midpoint of an edge line to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above one vertex corner to its opposite vertex corner.
Made of 12 pentagons and the only three-dimensional regular polygon to be made of that shape, the dodecahedron has spin axes of symmetry connecting from above the centroid of one cell face to the centroid of the opposite cell face, from above the midpoint of one edge line to the midpoint of the opposite edge line, and from above one vertex corner to the opposite vertex corner. These regular polytopes all share the same three basic types of spin symmetry axes, expressed as the three traits of length across the cell face, width of the edge line, and depth of the vertex corners, because they exist in three-dimensional space, which is defined by six possible directions or three pairs of opposites, each pair being a dimension. Because they share all these traits, the five regular solids can be embedded or nested into one another in a variety of different arrangements. Because it has a unique spin axis of symmetry, connecting from above the centroid of one cell face to an opposite vertex corner, and from above one vertex corner, vice versa, to the centroid of the opposite cell face, the tetrahedron does not have a corresponding dual counterpart with any other of the five regular polytopes in three dimensions. However, the remaining four polytopes in three dimensions are dually paired to one another. The centroid points of the eight cell faces of an octahedron can be connected as the eight vertex corners of a cube, and the centroid points of the six cell faces of a cube can be connected as the six vertex corners of an octahedron. Likewise, the isosahedron's 20 cell faces centroid points can all be connected together to comprise the 20 vertex corners of a dodecahedron, and, just so, the 12 cell faces centroid points of a dodecahedron can all be connected to produce the form of the isosahedron from its 12 vertex corners. When one of these five regular polytopes in three dimensions is nested or embedded inside of another, they remain in relationship to one another as three-dimensional forms. But when one of these five regular polytopes in three dimensions is nested or embedded inside of another identical to itself, it takes on the characteristics of a hypershape or four-dimensional polytope. Picture a tetrahedron made of four tetrahedrons around a central fifth vertex corner. Picture a cube made of six cubes around a central seventh, and this innermost seventh cube has the same volume as the outermost cube containing all the rest. This is the realm of four-dimensional space, where a three-dimensional regular polytope multiplied by itself over time becomes a hypershape or four-dimensional regular polytope. Likewise, the three-dimensional octahedron has its counterpart in the four-dimensional 16 cell, the three-dimensional dodecahedron in the four-dimensional 120 cell, and the three-dimensional isosahedron in the four-dimensional 600 cell. Counterpart of the tetrahedron in three dimensions the four simplex, or hypertetrahedron, is, as its title implies, the simplest form of regular polyhedra possible in any given dimension. In two dimensions, this is the triangle of three vertex corners and three edge lines. In three dimensions, the tetrahedron of four triangles. In four dimensions, the four simplex of four tetrahedrons combined into one. When imaging the properties of four-dimensional polytopes using CGI, however, 
we are immediately confronted with the significant difference between such hyper shapes and regular polytopes in three dimensions such as the platonic solids. The vertex corners, edge lines, and cell faces of a four-dimensional hypershape can all pass through one another, thus violating the law applicable in three dimensions that surfaces remain impenetrable. We can clearly see in CGI rendered models how the vertex corners, edge lines, and even cell faces of four-dimensional hypershape regular polytopes can pass through one another. This trait is common to all dimensions greater than the third. The counterpart of the cube in three dimensions, the hypercube, or tesseract, is best understood as being a single cube moving between two different places in space over a duration of time. Thus, one cube becomes two equal cubes with the same inner volume and outer surface area. This extension of a single three-dimensional polytope into a pair of equal polytopes along a dimension that measures duration is the essence of hyperspace geometry as it relates to the possible physics of zero-point energy. If four-dimensional space may be used to model the fourth-dimensional motion of entropy, then the motions of these four-dimensional regular polytopes, as rendered according to CGI wireframe modeling, become significantly more relevant to understanding the nature of such hypershapes and their hyperspace geometry as they affect zero-point energy above the speed of light and thus beyond the fastest velocity of entropy. The counterpart of the octahedron in three dimensions, the 16-cell regular polytope in four dimensions, sometimes called a four-orthoplex, is dual embedding to the tesseract or four-dimensional cube in the same way as the octahedron is to the cube in three dimensions, and so vice versa as well. The tesseract embeds dually inside of and around the 16 cell in the same way the cube does around and within the octahedron. The 16 cell faces of the 16 cell correspond to the 16 vertex corners of the tesseract, and so the 24 cell faces of the tesseract or hypercube correspond to the 24 vertex corners of the 16 cell regular polytope in four dimensions. Again, consider the motions taken by this hyperoctahedron as it violates the law of impermeable plane spaces in CGI rendering. The fourth dimension of time does not obey the same laws as the third dimension of space. The 24 cell is self-dual, meaning its 24 cell faces map exactly onto its own 24 vertex corners and it embeds itself within itself. Thus, the 24 cell is truly a four-dimensional hypershape in the sense of being an object nested within itself, the only difference between the interior and exterior of which is measured as a duration in the fourth dimension, e.g. over time. In three dimensions, each regular polytope had a flat surface for its cell faces. The tetrahedron was triangles, the cube squares, the dodecahedron pentagons, etc. But in four dimensions, each regular polytope has a three-dimensional polytope as each of its cell faces. The four simplex, or hypertetrahedron, having four tetrahedrons as cell faces. The hypercube, or tesseract, having six cubes around a central seventh inside of an eighth as its cell faces. 
and so the 24 cell with 24 octahedron cell faces, etc. Although the 24 cell is made out of octahedron cell faces, it is not reducible to a three-dimensional octahedron. Because it is self-dual, it is not accurately comparable to any of the five regular polytopes in three dimensions. The 24 cell is a hypershape unique to four dimensions. The counterpart of the dodecahedron in three dimensions the 120 cell is dual with the 600 cell in four dimensions. Because the 600 cell is comparable to the isosahedron in three dimensions, and so, like the dodecahedron and isosahedron in three dimensions, the 120 cell and 600 cell are dual embedding to one another. The 120 cell faces of the 120 cell correspond to the 120 vertex corners of the 600 cell, and the 600 cell faces of the 600 cell correspond to the 600 vertex corners of the 120 cell. The manner in which these hyper shapes fit together is the same as the manner in which the five regular polytopes in three dimensions can be nested into one another, or else into themselves recursively. This manner is innate to their geometries, whether they are in three-dimensional space or in four-dimensional space-time. And, as we shall see in the next section, this progression does not end with the fourth spatial dimension. It continues on to a plateau from the fifth dimension onward, with only three regular polytopes for any dimension greater than four. The counterpart of the three-dimensional isosahedron, the four-dimensional 600 cell, is dual with the four-dimensional 120 cell, which corresponds to the three-dimensional dodecahedron in the same way the isosahedron is dual to the dodecahedron in three dimensions. This means the 600 cell faces of the 600 cell correspond to the 600 vertex corners of the 120 cell, and the 120 cell faces of the 120 cell correspond to the 120 vertex corners of the 600 cell. The 600 cell is comprised of 600 isosahedral cell faces, and as these all move relative to and through one another in CGI rendered models, we can conclude that in four-dimensional space-time, unlike in three-dimensional space, surface areas are not inviolable. If spatial three-dimensional surface areas can be violated in this manner in the hyperspace of four-dimensional space-time, then we can understand all these hypershapes as being temporal forms that can pass invisibly through solid objects. If we think of the five regular polytopes as being, in three dimensions, merely a shadow cast by hypershapes that themselves exist in four-dimensional hyperspace or space-time, then the source of the illumination by which these four-dimensional hypershapes cast these three-dimensional polytope shadows is itself at least fifth-dimensional in its nature. So we study the fourth dimension to understand time, and so we study the fifth dimension to understand tachyons. The five simplex, or fifth dimensional tetrahedron, is simply enough comprised of five tetrahedra cell faces. Just as a tetrahedron in three dimensions, has four triangular faces and a hypertetrahedron or four simplex in four dimensions has four tetrahedra cell faces around an extra inner vertex corner. 
so too does the 5 simplex merely expand this central core vertex corner into a fifth tetrahedron cell face. Nevertheless, the 5 simplex remains elusive to the minds of many due to its boundary breaking motions. It should also be noted that, by this point, the hypershape we are modeling with CGI can exhibit motion in no fewer than 10 different possible directions, and all at the same time. Thus, being able to pass through itself intangibly, and to exhibit motion in 10 or more different directions, the simplex hypershape above the fourth dimension, that is, from the fifth dimension up, differs from how we tend to think about solid matter with mass in three-dimensional space. The five-dimensional hypercube, or five tesseract, is modeled in CGI rendering according to only a slight complication of the four-dimensional hypercube, or four tesseract. Just as the cube in three dimensions has six cell faces, each a square of four vertex corners and four edge lines, and the hypercube in four dimensions has six cubes around a seventh, all inside an eighth, so too does the five tesseract have 32 vertices, 80 edges, 80 square faces, 40 cubic cells, and 10 tesseract four faces. As the hypershapes become further and further removed from the familiar physics we experience in our three-dimensional space and four-dimensional space-time reality, their exotic properties also multiply. As such, what we can model using CGI rendering of shapes in the fifth dimension is superficial, at best, to the depths of their possible motions. A two orthoplex is a square. A three orthoplex is a regular octahedron. And a four orthoplex is a 16 cell. The five orthoplex, or five dimensional cross polytope, is thus also rightly a fifth dimensional hyper octahedron. The cross polytope is the dual polytope of the tesseract or hypercube and so the number of cell faces of one will always correspond to the number of vertex corners in the other regardless of which dimension it is in. Thus in all dimensions from the fifth up the tesseract pattern and the orthoplex pattern are intertwined, while the simplex model stands apart and alone. So, from the fifth dimension onward, so far as we know now, there are no fewer than these three hyper shapes in each dimensional stratum. It should be noted, there may be more or less regular polytopes on any dimensional level and the realms of multidimensional geometry are still being explored. So, let us next pause to consider that Hekbalah, the ancient Hebrew mystic tradition, is based largely on study of the four-dimensional hypercube, or four-tesseract, in the form of the Gra diagram of the Tree of Life, the latter-day name for the Tree of Knowledge in Eden. In this context, the hypershape is used as a lattice onto which to place traits for memorization of their relationships to one another. Focusing the mind on a four-dimensional hypershape is considered to be a profound mystical experience by some, and if performed correctly, it can inspire ideas, thoughts, and emotions one otherwise would have never had. But what does it mean for Hakabalah to be based largely on the study of the four tesseract? The tesseract itself is only one facet in the manifold of all possible hypershapes. So what is it about the four tesseract 
that has attracted to it such importance. We shall study this in the next section of my lecture series on Kabbalah.